Okay, you should be on workbook page 357, ready to start this chapter on sequences. Go ahead and pause the video, read the vocabulary startup at the top. Number sequences, all you have to do is continue each sequence. So if we go 1, 3, 5, 7, the next number is going to be the number 9. So let's write the number 9 in there. If we got 1, 1 1.5, 2, the next number is going to be 2.5, then 3, then 3.5. So in the words, describe each sequence, okay? So what you're doing is you're adding, even though it is odd numbers, you're actually adding 2 to the previous term. Or down here, you're adding 0.5 to the previous term. So make sure you get this written down in your books. Moving on. For the real world link, okay, read about the horseback riding. Okay, so it asks, do the numbers represent the terms of an arithmetic uh, sequence? Uh, we have a trip, one, two, three, four, five, those go in order. Uh, number of students, it goes up, um, Let's see, from 15 to 16, it goes up by 1, then it goes up by 2, then by 3, then by 25. Um, so actually, no, it does not go in an order, okay, because the same number is not added to the previous number. So from here, we go plus 1. From here, it's plus 2, okay? Because it's not the same, this is not an arithmetic sequence, okay? So we're going to explain, so write this down on your paper, the number added to the previous is not the same. All right, let's move on, turn the page, and let's get our examples going. So if you read at the top, describe and extend sequences, okay, we're dealing more with arithmetic sequences. So look at example one. You have to describe the relationship of going from 8 to 13 to 18 and then to 23. So if you look in the sequence that it describes, it's adding 5 every single time, okay? So to continue the pattern, you would just simply add 5. Look at example number two in your books. Describe the relationship from 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.8 to 1. You're adding a 0.2. So in order to describe the relationship, you would just say adding 0.2 to the previous number. Now, go ahead and look at the bottom of your page. Look at the got it questions. Go ahead and describe the relationship. So even though you can, okay, give the next three terms, you still need to describe what's going on with the relationship. Pause your video. Go ahead and get those done. Resume play for the answers. Okay, make sure you uh, have all these explanations for A, B, C, and D. And make sure you change your answers to make sure they have the correct answers in there, please. And then when you're done writing, um, go ahead and move on. Okay, let's just take a look at this. Um, if you go to the next page on page 359, this is page 359. At the top, it shows you how they start to put these sequences in an actual table, okay? This is actually what we're going to get ready to get into uh, moving into our next um, subject. So if you notice during the operation, they are multiplying by 2 every single time. So that is why your expression, okay, notice it does not have an equal sign yet, so that's why it's called an expression. That's why your expression is 2 times n because these numbers change. So since one, two, three, and four, since they're changing every single time, that's what N stands for. But since the two never changes, that's why it's being multiplied by two, okay? So your expression ends up being two N. Let's get some practice. So if you look down at example three, the greeting cards, okay, that Meredith has, the first week, okay, she sold five. Um, so basically each week she's selling five. So if you look, the five is your constant number. So your constant number is going to be the number that's getting multiplied to the number that's changing 
which is n. So 5n ends up being your expression. Now, once you have that expression, you can solve any type of question that they have for you, like the hundredth week. So basically, if um, you take 5n as your expression and you substitute the 100 in place of the n and just take 5 times 100, you end up getting 500. So that's how we use our expressions in order to solve the problems or the questions that they want us to answer. Now, turn the paper or turn your page over to page 360. We're going to do um, <clears throat> got it question E together. So listen carefully. If the pattern continues, what algebraic expression can be used to find the number of circles used in any figure? So we have to be able to write an expression. Okay, so we have to come up with an algebraic expression. So in figure one, we have three. In figure two, we have six. In figure three, I believe it would be nine. So let's check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Correct. So let's make a table. So we start out in figure one, figure two, and figure three. That's our first column. What are we doing every single time? Are we adding three or multiplying by three? So let's go ahead and uh, let's use multiply by three. So figure one, that would be times three. Figure two, that would be times three. Figure three, that would be times three. Let's see if we actually get the number of circles. One times three is three, two times three is six, three times three is nine. Yes, it's working. So the number that is getting um, multiplied every single time is the three. Okay, so that's going to be our constant number. And then these values, the ones that are changing, are going to be our variable. So this right here is our expression. Let's write this on our paper. So now it asks for the 50th figure. Okay, so if we were to continue our table to 50, then you would simply do 50 times 3, okay, which is 150. Or using the expression, you would just substitute and you would still get the same answer. So 3n is our expression because that's what our question asks us to do, and 150 circles would be in the 50th figure. All right, pause your video, make sure you have everything written down that you're supposed to, and then move on. Guided practice. Okay, go ahead and do your guided practice. Do one through four. Um, pause your video, complete the problems, and then press play when you're ready for the answers. Okay, go ahead and check your answers. Pause your video, make any corrections that you may have, and move on.